basic basic uh, idea here is we're gonna start with form. So form is the overall shape of the object in three dimension. And then two, we're gonna divide that form. So what are the functional elements that make this thing work? And then three, we're going to beautify that form. Okay, so I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep it simple. Um, but let's say we wanted to do a bit of a different pencil sharpener. All right, so I'm gonna do something with a foot like this. So maybe it has a metal foot. And let's go ahead and cantilever the main body of the sharpener. Cantilever means like it's kind of hanging out over an open area. Okay, still want to be in perspective. So looking at these three lines, one, two, three, they would converge to some point. The one thing I did mess up on just to show you guys so these lines that are at an angle would actually converge at some auxiliary vanishing point. So I'm actually going to pull these back like so, because all these lines need to appear to converge at some auxiliary vanishing point. All right, so maybe my design's cantilevered, adjustable, I don't know. But we've got some sort of foot here. It's a part of this design. I mean, if we want to make it kind of cool, maybe it's uh, you know a piece of bent wood or something. That could be interesting. And let's go ahead and round these corners on the sharpener. So I'm going to round all four of these corners. Again, a little bit of a cheat here. It happened real quick, but it was a little bit off. Just slightly curve that line. I'm giving you all my secrets today. Maybe I'll call this the super top secret show. All right, so now I'm gonna divide the front of the sharpener here. I do have to decide, okay, where do the shavings go, all that stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and divide the front and I'm gonna divide the side because I want some sort of color here as well. I've also cheated on the top ever so slightly because I wouldn't really see much or any of the top, but we can add a background to help clean that up when the time comes. So I'll just sketch that in for now. If you were to look at this from the side, what I'm sketching basically is something like this. Okay, so I figure if you're at a desk, maybe you want this angled up a little bit, okay? Maybe maybe all the shavings slide to the back. I don't know, just thinking out loud here. Or it could be your traditional um, kind of split configuration. Like so. But to tie it all in, you know, I've kind of got this little affordance for pulling this tray out. Actually, let's have the tray inset. So the tray's inset here, maybe that's how you pull it out. Just to make this consistent, we'll keep the part line right there. And now this is where we would input our pencil. Pencil will help you establish context for the sketch. Like we know, okay, this goes in, <laughs> right? That's how um, the sharpener starts, for example. So the whole front here, let's see, I'm gonna do a color um, for this, but maybe it's a matte and gloss separation, or we could do two different colors. Like I said, the bottom, I'm gonna have that be maybe some sort of bent wood. Like so, and I'm just gonna do a simple contact shadow. I was supposed to record an episode on shadows this week and I totally botched it, so my apologies.
to you guys. All right, just grabbing my brown markers here. Trusty Copic brown markers. And I'm just gonna pick a few, I mean, depending on the, the type of wood, your colors will vary. But I'm just gonna start with this E13. here. Isla says, I have an idea for a video I could do. Okay. Um, best would be shoot me an email. Next best would be leave a comment. The reason I say shoot me an email is it's kind of easy for me to forget right after the stream. It takes me about 30 minutes to like come down off doing the stream. It's like, it's honestly, it's like an adrenaline rush. Maybe it sounds crazy, but it takes me a minute to just cool down and not want to just keep drawing forever all day. So I don't know if you've uh, ever drawn or designed something all day, but um, it can certainly mess with your head a little bit. Success, chill vibes. Good evening from Japan, what's up? Success is the person in the chat, by the way. <laughs> I didn't mean to imply success as if I did something. I mean, I am kind of doing something here. All right, so I wanted this to kind of be some sort of plywood. So I'm just gonna add a few light grain lines and wrap these grain lines up. You definitely want the wrap so that it feels like one piece. Subtle, but we'll we'll go ahead and enhance as we can. Are you tuning in from Jamaica? Okay, so I want to hint at the layers of the plywood, so I'm just taking this darker marker now. Right here. And now I can skip a line on the sides as well. Skip some spots, okay? Just to make that seem like make it seem like it has a layer in there, okay? And some of these grain lines, I'm just going to kind of kiss the paper with my brush marker like so. Yeah, if you are using the Discord to message me, just send me a direct message. That's actually a good way, too, because it pops up on my phone. Um, I typically don't um, answer personal questions, but I'll give, like, a general critique. I won't do your homework for you, either. <laughs> At least I try not to. All right, so just a couple... Little kisses here, right next to the original lines that I put down. Kiss, kiss. All right, so just like that, we now have our base for the sharpener. I do wish I'd move this back ever so slightly. This is kind of long, FYI. Now you know my shame. And I think I'm gonna go with just a solid color for the whole thing. Um, so I have to pick what color I wanna use. I do like red, so I can use a red. Ah, from Minnesota, nice. You know I'm from Jamaica, right? Okay, so we'll get this outline here. And like I said, maybe there's a matte gloss kind of delineation here. So on the back, I think I'm gonna keep this matte on the back portion. So just kind of a flood fill on the paper. 
with the marker. If you are looking for markers, and no, they don't pay me to say this, the Ohuhu brush markers are pretty good. So. Price to value, pretty awesome. Okay, so if this is a really shiny surface, we're gonna get some nice crisp things happening, okay? So here, for example, by things happening, I mean the reflections in the side. Okay, so just being careful here on the top. I'll probably use a little colored pencil to help me out as well. But I do want to create kind of a nice gradient. At a certain point here, maybe we'll stop there. And now continue to build up these values on both. We're still gonna have a shadow core happening. Still gonna have light not hitting these surfaces perfectly evenly. It's a thing. So we'll just take this deeper red now. Hopefully you can see, it's gonna start bringing out the form. This is on marker paper, yes, John. This is absolutely on marker paper. Lynette was asking, or saying rather, <clears throat> I've been actually wondering about how you can show highlights on matte materials. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. I'll have to use some pencil on top of all this, um, do a lot of blending, but we'll get there. It's gonna take some work, but we will get there. I could also use my really expensive Copic markers here to create a blend. So we can try that. So you've got an R20, 21, 30. All right. So just a little pink here on the top, like so. Instead of the pencil, at least right now, just using this marker to get that blend down. So this is a red 20. Now I'm gonna to jump to a 21. Let's see if I can help this blend out. It looks weird on your screen, but I promise you Check out the Google Drive after the stream and you'll see the method to the madness that you're witnessing. All right, so if the front's shinier, like I said, you're gonna get more intense uh, dark spots, right? So like right in here, can darken this up. After this, I'm gonna do one more sketch. We're doing a garden trimmer of some sort. I think it was Matt that requested that one. <clears throat> All right, let me grab my pencils. Maybe I will. And the reason I want the pencils is, well, a couple. It's a good way to add value, um, but also I can kind of come in and clean up some of these lines. If I want this area to be a little bit darker, 
as well. I can just shade that in like so. And the black just kind of helps out. So Lynette, you were asking about matte surfaces, how to show highlights. Um, a lot of times I'll just use a pencil, kind of work the surface, gives it a little bit of texture, but also um, helps with that gradient or transition. I will need some white highlighting here on the side. And I'm gonna do something that you rarely, if ever, see me do on the stream or period. I'm gonna actually take a straight edge to create just a nice defining line here, okay? So this is the one time you'll see me use a straight edge. Boom. Don't tell anyone about it. It's a lot easier with pencil to use that straight edge if you are cleaning up your drawing. If I were just using the marker, I could freehand it, no problem. All right, so now we have our separation there. <clears throat> like I said, having the white marker is gonna help. I can add just a little highlight on that far edge. And now we have a part separation between these two. Okay, on the top here, I probably need a white pencil um, just to enhance that a little bit. So I'll grab that and right up here, Lynette, you can see just this white pencil on the top to enhance things or even push back the marker a little bit for this blend that we have happening. I swear my eyes are like playing tricks on me right now. It was so weird just a while ago, like I was seeing some weird stuff. I can't even describe it to you, but anyhow, we can lighten up and soften that transition right in there as well. Okay, so now let's get the sharpener and shavings and all of that um, in place, all right? So we have this front area. I'm gonna do this in gray and we'll, we'll use marker for that. But in here, right, we've got this tray and this tray has thickness to it. So I'll start by just sketching a little thickness in. Maybe a couple lines back. And now, where we have all those shavings, okay, I'm just gonna kind of take my pencil and just jog it, you know, kind of in an erratic stroke here. And toward the light source, it's almost like drawing a tree, honestly, or how I draw my trees. So toward the light source, kind of leave these areas open. And then away from the light source, add a bit more texture and relief. Um, that's not to say up front here, I can't add any of that, because I can. But this is how I'm choosing to deal with this right now. All right. This is Sketch A Day Live. Thanks for joining us. Friday, May 1st. If you live in the United States, everything should be open today. Just kidding. Um, at least where I live, they're kind of reopening things. And uh, some people are on edge. Some people are like, yeah, let's do it. So we'll see how it goes. Either way, stay safe. Use your brains. And just sketch. All right, a little bit of line weight there. Okay. And now I have essentially a little area I can use to describe these shavings. So outside of that area, I'm just gonna shade this in gray and I'll mix in a little bit of red as well. Just like that. I'll zoom in so you can kind of see a little bit better guys. Right there. And on the front, I just want a nice light gray. Okay, something like this. So. We'll just shade, blend this in. And then if there's a little bit of a lip or a transition here, a little bit of a transition. I think I need to wait for this marker to dry a little bit more, but yeah, something like that. So while that dries up, I'm gonna jump to a nice darker gray. This contrast is our friend. All right, 
something like that. And then the shavings themselves. Let's go ahead and shade these in. And I'll use a couple different markers, um, some, some lighter, some uh, darker as well. Leave some white spots in there just to create the sensation of a texture. If I need to sh add any shadow, I'm just gonna take a gray marker and shade over a portion of these shavings, just like that. When your markers are dry on the paper, you can usually go over them again and get like another value out of it. So try that. Just give it a minute to dry. Don't be all fast like me and impatient. But now you can see there's a shadow over those shavings. <clears throat> Pardon me. And on these shavings, let's just add a couple white dots here and there on the front of the sharpener here as well, like so. And maybe even across the front, you know, if this is some sort of plastic, you know, just having having a few lines there might kind of help. Just play with it, see what works for you. Just like apps, like I mentioned earlier, there's no right or wrong way, just right or wrong principles. So as long as you're doing it your way, you're doing it the right way. A little bit of an outline. This is what I was talking about. I didn't need a ruler to do that, but if you're using pencil, it's a little iffier. Just a darker outline on the far side of the object. Across the top here as well. This is called ghosting. So I'm kind of hovering over the page and telling myself what I want to do before I do it so I can just do it. So nothing wrong with that. Practice before you set down your marker stroke. Save you a lot of heartache, heartache. All right, so there we go. There's our sharpener. Um, let's just for fun, for funsies, add a quick background color. I'll use this super cheap marker here, PB7. I'm gonna do a test because, okay, that looks all right. Sometimes these markers, uh, the cap and the color are just so far off. David says, measure twice, cut once. That's right, man. Similar thing. Although I make the mistake often when I'm woodworking to measure once and then I have to cut five times. So maybe that should be a thing too. Maybe. So because the background's blue, I just took this blue marker and just hit the top of the sharpener just a little bit. Lighting wise, it just helps unify the presentation ever so slightly. I do need to add some contrast to the bottom here where we have a shadow. Okay, and that also helps with the three dimensionality of this shape. All right, just like that. So that should feel a lot better now. Depending on your light source, where that's hitting, your shadow will be uh, respectful or respective of that. So just pay attention. I'm not gonna cast a whole shadow on this from the top. I think it would muddy, muddy the uh, visual impact of the foot here. All right, so something like that is feeling good.
All right. So there we go. There's our sharpener, fulfilling your request and hopefully matching your dreams. Okay, 